There we go. How are you doing? Pretty damn good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. I watched the movie just about, well, it finished about an hour ago. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, so it's fresh, fresh in my mind. I thought it was really good. I thought the pacing of it and the, the atmosphere was was great. And your performance and Matthias's performances were so, so strong, I thought. So it's really great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I love uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Guez. I think he's a real special filmmaker, you know, a, a real auteur and just an absolute... Uh, you know, dead on handle on every aspect of filmmaking and just really confident in, in his artistry. And it was, uh, it was a great, it was a great joy. I can't wait to, to do another movie with him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because obviously, I mean, it's such a, a sort of a movie that's so ingrained in kind of American culture. But this this really shows off the strength of European cinema, doesn't it? <laughs> with the kind of your two leads, the filmmaker. Did it was it was that? Did you feel that on set? Did it was ever a feeling of kind of like how strong the kind of the Europeans are in this instance? Yeah, I, I I was saying it all the time because we also shot it in Europe um, with the European crew. Um, so it it's it's just a different uh, you know they're a little bit slightly different conversations on set. Uh, there's never a conversation about you know, but is the character going to be un too unlikable or you know the it it, it just um, there's more of an unwavering. Um, commitment to the the characters and and to the story and 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 just i mean there of course there are great films made in in america like i chose to you know spend my career here but um but sometimes you have conversations about the wrong things and you're worrying too much about you know the financial return and you know you, sometimes films need to focus more on just making a great movie and be true to the the original vision and and here you never felt that there was ever uh, ever a question about you know questioning the filmmaker's vision uh, and um yeah so it was it was a yeah, it was i think aesthetically too with with uh with Benno uh the DP you know very 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 strong um director of photography and him and uh Jeremy had a great relationship. So, you know, it's beautiful, moody. Uh, it has this methodical pace. And, and Jeremy just, I think he just has, has an ability of, uh, of, you know, finding the truth in these situations and with these kind of characters. And, and I think also him growing up and, you know, similar kind of environments uh, were the French equivalent to, to what the movie portrays. Um, it's just going to lead him to not wanting to, glorifying you know the the gangster world or or to glorify the violence i think he has much more in mind the 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 human toll that those choices and that environment takes and 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 the toll that it takes on on people that are you know around those people um so so it yeah it was it was it was, it was fun it was it was kind of scary to to jump in because i i came in on a pretty short notice and um and when i read it i was like Fuck, this is a dream role. Um, you know, he's, he's really like this sort of wild animal that uh, that plays by his own rules, and 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 to jump in, do that kind of character on short notice with a Philadelphia accent. It it, it was a lot of things that felt like difficult, and and I was really scared of fucking it up. You know, I, you don't want to. There's one thing, you know, when you get a dream role, you want to get it right. Um, but then it sort of clicked for me and, uh, and I realized that I actually grew up with this guy. I grew up with, with the guy that, uh, that was, that was Michael, that was, you know, very bordering on being a sociopath, super charming, always had an angle on everyone. People were like charmed and afraid and, and he was always manipulating people and he had an angle and. So, and this was a guy that when I was a kid, when I, when I was young, I was trying to be him. You know, I was, I would try to imitate his, his mannerisms, his, the way that he physically related to people, how he talked to people when he tried to intimidate them or get something from them. And, and he just made people do things that they didn't want to do. And, 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 and he wouldn't even have to be threatening. He would just, the way that he talked and there was no way out of the conversation so, so when that clicked in me, it was, uh, I just got really loose with it. And, and I knew exactly what I, what I wanted to do with the character. So, so, so it, you know, it, it made it fun from, from the get go. 
Yeah, yeah. Because when you play someone that this, like you said, like a kind of wild animal, this hot headed, do you have to kind of g yourself up at the beginning of the day? Do you always have to like stand in the mirror and like slap yourself in the face? It feels like that. <laughs> it feels like one of those sort of roles where you really need to, because it takes over every part of your being, doesn't it, to be a character like this? Yeah. To me, it, it's like I I rarely have to like rev myself up anymore. Um, it's more of, of just kind of like sinking into the body language and and then just accepting that this is who you are, <laughs> and and then and then it it's like uh, it feels like everything is there, you know, if I need it. Um, when when I was starting out in acting, uh, or you know, the first several years. I would be then like listening to sad music if I was supposed to be sad and, you know, thinking, you know, compulsively about the, you know, when my cat died or, or, you know, when someone, when my dad was mean to me or, you know, these, but then after a while, you've sort of already created those pathways in, in your, in your mind and like sort of the, emo- you know how to breathe to get there. And, and, uh, and after a while, you just, you've, uh, you know, it, it's 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 kind of a trippy thing now. I'm, I've been realizing the last couple of years, uh, you know, I've been doing this for more than 20 years now, and um, so that it's part of the skill set that you that you get from doing something for such a long time that you don't need to rev it up like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, when you play, I mean, the characters like this, there's a certain type of mind and a certain type of person that can be so callous that death doesn't almost seem to affect them. It's just something like, yeah, just kill him. You know, it's just one of those things. But I mean, how did, how is it playing characters like that and getting it? Because that's a mindset that when you haven't got that switch in your brain, it must be very hard to then relate to people like that. But when you've, as like you said, you kind of picked up all these skills across your career. Is it you finding it easier now to play roles like that, play people that have that kind of empty kind of vacant space in their mind? Yeah, I, you know, because, you know, of course, if you're, if you're playing, if you're doing something that has pretend circumstances around it, you know, it's going to be pretty, it's, it's always pretty easy to not feel anything. So, so the difficulty is to not feel something in the right way, right? Um, where you feel that it's that, that it's vacant, that it's something that's vacant there. I mean, I, but I think it's also, you know, I think, think sociopathy is something that you're, you can be born with, but then I think you can also drive yourself to a place through, just extensive actions and and brutalizing your own conscious and 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 your and your empathy that that you kind of wear it down and uh, and and so and then and then you almost become like a sociopath it's that nature and nurture in a way but I, and and I I mean I remember from growing up I had a period in my life where I did a lot of like really horrible things to people and um and and I and I remember having that process in me where I actually wore down my empathy and I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel bad even you know when hurting people and uh, and then and then you know when I shifted pace in my life I sort of um, you know I gained that back uh, my empathy came back but but I, and and I think a person like Michael I think he might have something in him that. It, from an early age or but also growing up with a gangster uh, sociopath father you know he's gonna be pretty pretty fucked up and um so so it it is finding that vacant that that vacant where, where where other people would feel empathy but you it's just vacant yeah you mentioned that you've been doing this for like 20 years. I mean, I'm like, like a lot of people, I probably first saw you in Easy Money, which is such a fantastic uh, movie. I'm just wondering about um, when you sort of first, yeah, but how much you kind of owe to that, to that project. And you owe, and do you still look back on that kind of, that, that time in your life as being such a definitive sort of time in, in your career? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it, w- it was sort of, uh, it, it, it put a cap on my or you know like put not put a cap but it was uh yeah it, it was like sort of the, the definitive thing that i did in sweden that um that just gave me a, a, a you know this this boost of confidence of, of being being like the leader of something that became something bigger and um and then also it I'd actually already moved to the to the states, and I, I'd actually been cast in the killing before Easy Money came out. Um, 
So a lot of people think that, uh, or, you know, that sort of followed the early stages of my career. They thought that, you know, I did easy money and because of that, I got the killing. But it, it was actually, I actually got the killing and was cast in it before easy money came out. And then, um, um, but yeah, it, it for sure, artistically a lot. My relationship with the Daniel Espinosa was really, really important. You know, we've done a couple of things after that as well. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's still, you know, up there of the, the best films that I've made. Yeah. And my final question was obviously like looking ahead. Obviously, well, it's hard not to talk about Suicide Squad too, because I think me and you spoke a few, a few months ago in, in lockdown. You said you felt like it, you did your first comedy i just wondered when when you play when you were playing in that were you playing it straight and tonally as as kind of fans even though obviously you it sounds like you had a great time on set uh, you know particularly with john cena is it going to be played really for laughs like what, what can we expect tonally uh, tonally it's um you, you know for, for me it was it was it was it was a new experience and and i i really i told james like you have to guide me in this because no one's ever asked me to say you know something ridiculous like this with a straight face before so uh, and and it, it it really made me get gave me so much respect for comedians that you know they make it look so easy it's not easy it's really not easy um so i had to work hard on it and uh, and sometimes you know James had me do like 12, 13 takes uh, to get the, the right tone. And, uh, and, and it was, I did, I felt lost. Like how, what, what is, what am I not doing right? Like, well, how do I get there? And then sometimes it would be one take. And, and, and so that, you know, that, that's the, that's the relief of, of having someone that is so sure tonally in that space of, uh, you know, letting, of, of guiding you. And, um, but, but the film, you know, the tone of the film, it's, uh, it's a complete it's completely uh ridiculous um <laughs> like ridiculous characters um incredibly r-rated um super silly humor surprisingly moving at times it, it's like yeah i like i i can't i can't wait to see this film myself because it was like when i read the script like i every page made me laugh it's um he he just has a real handle of that that genre, James Gunn, you know, where where he he knows that he can he can like he can go so silly, you know, he can put a silver toilet seat on John Cena's head, and 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 it's <laughs> and it becomes the best thing that you have seen in in a long time, and um, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not doing a very good job of describing this. No, 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 I can't wait. It sounds like use it to my ears when you describe it because they're doing a Peacemaker series as well. I mean, we I know, could, yeah, but, but you... and, and that and that is a result of, you know, like we, I think we were all kind of blown away by John Cena uh, on that movie because he, you know, he, he from day one, he just started like improvising. He went on these like comedic rants. Uh, it was all you know, 98% unusable because uh, it's just so sexually perverted and wrong and uh, and and just <laughs> uh, and so bizarre, you know, bizarre things that came out of that man's <laughs> sick, sick brain. Yeah. And, uh, and and and, he, you know, it, it looks like, you know, he was like born out of an American flag. You know, it was like he's like, he's so ridiculously American, John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I can't wait to see all of this. It sounds great. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, but but you know, like he, he's a brilliant comedian. Like he's a brilliant comedian. I, I you know I was uh, I tried to learn from him, you know, but it, it, that's impossible because it, the things that came out of his face can only come out of his perverted brain. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, uh, I've run out of time. But thank you so much today, Joe. It's been a pleasure speaking to you again. Yeah, uh, nice to talk to you. Next time I speak to you, it'll be for like it could be for the Suicide Squad press tour for we know. So yeah, maybe it'll be in person. Yeah. Hey, oh, oh, fingers crossed. No. <laughs> All yeah. right, man. take care. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.